The Mamut coke drum move is a big model in a big box. It's nearly a metre long and weighs over 14 kilos. It's contained in an outer carton which protects it well and then when you snip the ties you can remove the outer sleeve and the whole model is wrapped in foam rubber. A DVD is included with film of the real operation and some clips from it have been used in this review. The set includes three tractor units, two Kenworths and a Western Star and they're all similarly well packed in the box and with each uh, of the tractors there is a bag of parts to use. So here are the three tractors lined up and we'll start by having a good look at one of the Kenworths. The tractors are quite large and heavy uh, with excellent detail which we'll see more of later. Um, if we look underneath um, everything's modelled as it should be, um, the wheels work fine um, and the good news here is that the uh, steering mechanism is very good so you can get a good hard lock on the steering and uh, when you put it down with the wheel steered um, it rolls very nicely. They also have a fully working suspension on all the axles and, uh, and that also works very well and that includes the front axle too. The fifth wheel is both spring loaded so it's uh, easy to clip on a kingpin from a trailer and you can also move it in position longitudinally. At the front the Kenworth can have an open sided engine and the two top halves of the hood open and uh, close well but you've also got another option which is to fit the removable side panels and they just clip into place and then you can shut the hood. The doors on the tractor cabs open and it's been implemented really really well because it's hard to tell actually that they open at all uh, because the fit is so good but using a pointer they're easily opened and you can see a detailed uh, interior and although it's taken WSI a long time to implement um, opening cab doors on their models uh, the weight's certainly been worthwhile because it's been done very well indeed. Right at the front each tractor has a towing point and a tow bar is provided and when you've connected up if you want you can run the tractors uh, in a line in series. Each tractor has a ballast box and uh, these should be chained at the rear with uh, crossover chains so best thing is just to hang them off and then um, after you fiddled with it long enough you can get them into place and then just rest the ballast box on the fifth wheel and it stays in position. And lastly at the back you have a pin for the towing hitch and that just pops easily into place. So let's have a look at the detail on the Kenworths and it's really really good. The uh, grille here is uh, excellent on the front and the lights are really nice and the small grab rail too. Um, interesting feature on the Kenworths is the two identical tractors but the fleet number is different on each of them which is a really nice touch by WSI and all the chrome work is great too. The Western Star is the lead off tractor in the formation and it's every bit as good as the Kenworths, great detailing, very little use of plastic, um, even the roof aerials are fine gauge metal. And looking at some of the chrome work, it's very high quality, uh, great details, fine mesh, um, really does look good on the model. There are a few differences on the Western Star. At the rear there are a couple of floodlights to be fitted and on the roof there is a warning sign which can be raised and lowered uh, using the very small metal cylinders that have been modelled. And at the front the hood opens forward and that reveals a detailed engine uh, which has got various coloured components. Now we'll take a look at the Shoyolo units and there are 12 in all provided in the set. Um, they're all nicely packaged and you get a four line version and there are eight of those and you get a two line version which is goes in the middle and there are four of those. Also in the box are lots and lots of deck plates and many other small parts as well. These units are derived from WSI's standard uh, Shoyla system and they're very nicely engineered um, with excellent suspension um, on each of the uh, lines of wheels and um, if we look underneath one of the uh, trailer units the details really really good with uh, uh, airlines running along the spine beam and tanks 
and uh, as I said the suspension is really good and uh, these are configured to steer and you can see that they have got linked proportional steering which is um, also really really nice when you're ready to join the units up, the first thing to do is to check carefully that you've got them oriented the right way, both in terms of the steering bars and the um, knuckle joints on the lines, um, and, and the instructions are quite clear for telling you what to do there. And to join them along the long edge, small plastic clips are provided which just uh, simply clip into place, and uh, when you've got that done, you can then just uh, join two adjacent units together and they just clip and it's quite a solid connection and when you've got that done then you've got the first pair produced. You then carry on building up the trailer set by joining them at the uh, ends and for this there's a really neat system that uh, WSI have developed which is the integral locking pin which um, when you join the two units together um, you see that there's a little pin that you can just push through and that locks the two units together and it's a rigid connection so it's a really good design and then you can just clip the adjacent units together with the plastic clips that we saw earlier and that produces quite uh, a robust um, layout of units. To fit the drawbar I find it's best to fit the two steering bars to the mechanism and feed them through first um, but there's no two ways around it this is a tricky operation and uh, your fingers are really definitely too big to, to do this uh, easily and so you have to fiddle with it a while until you get it right and then you're ready to secure it with the special clip that's provided and after that's done you then need to screw the ends of the steering bars um, into the uh, trailer mechanism and that's also a very um, intricate and tricky piece of work but it can be done with a complete trailer set built up we're in the home stretch so um, it's easy enough to add all of the deck plates on and when that's complete you can add uh, one of the main carrying frames for the coke drum and the last two items to add are the cab and a small generator. The detail and construction of the Shoyolu units is really good and again every single unit has a unique fleet number. The support structures look convincing too, they're metal and replicate the fabrications well. Coke drum is what the model is all about and it's a heavy and impressive piece. Uh, it comes wrapped in uh, tissue and looking at it you can see how large it is compared to uh, an average sized hand and it uh, is authentically painted with a kind of uh, rusty steel colour. It would have been nice if there had been some uh, weld patterns on the on the coke drum I think and there are some uh, good graphics as well. With all the parts ready you can assemble the model and achieve something really special. It's about 1.8 metres long, so you do need a lot of space to show it fully configured. In fact, it's a great combination of massive size with lots of intricate detail, and it's been executed really well by WSI. It's also really good that Mamut commissioned this model to commemorate the 300 mile journey that these massive coke drums took. This is certainly an outstanding model. Uh -huh.